I know I'm entirely too early, but if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it was fun studying film with these two. Either way, Crawford vs. Porter is an intriguing style and skill set matchup. To a good degree, they are molded to each other's strengths and weaknesses. Both fighters have tremendous athleticism and endurance. Both fighters have the ability to mix it up. Let's get it. At one moment, Sean Porter could be circling the ring, pendulum bouncing, using a very good jab and good counter punching. The next, he's coming forward, singular double jabbing or off a counter trying to get in your chest, throwing power, banging it out with relentless pressure. An incredibly tough fighter that had enough power and pressure to hurt, throw off, or frustrate most of his highly skilled opponents, hence all the split decisions against his toughest adversaries. Terrence Bud Crawford is a multi-dimensional fighter who adjusts and fights according to the style of his opponent with a very high boxing IQ and power in both hands. There isn't exactly a normal with Terrence Crawford. He fights southpaw or orthodox. He can bang it out or outbox you. He can outthink you or outpunch you. He can lead or counterpunch. He can fight moving forward, backward, and laterally. A three-weight division, undisputed, seven-year reigning champ. Porter has a very nice jab off the pendulum or bounce step, often unpredictable, breaking from the rhythm that his footwork dictates to land a very fast and hard jab. Porter is also known to punch wide with hooks and overhands from awkward angles, catching his opponents off guard as a counter, lead strike, or set behind the jab. Uh, the father, I, I'm glad he tried. Short right hand, that really looked nice. Now here's a big reach by... And, and here you see... Porter hitting Spence on the top of the head. That and what's the Porter do? He answers back. Look at Porter's trunks. Porter's trunks are very high. Oh, yeah. Right in the top of uh, Porter, but he wasn't Luckily for Porter, Crawford has been vulnerable to wide shots early on in fights as he's known to drop his back hand with outstretched arms to catch or parry instead of holding the phone. Opponents have also caught Crawford reaching for head control. Also, being a switch hitter isn't just confusing to opponents when a lot of pressure is applied. Your defensive fundamentals are reversed and it's easy to confuse hand placement caught in between orthodox or southpaw. Crawford also gets caught by wide counter shots late in fights once rounds are in the bag where he has his opponent hurt and he wants to close the show being aggressive, but that's more of a risk reward situation. Crawford has taken big hooks and overhands from big punchers in his career and hasn't officially been knocked down yet. It's possible that Porter could be the one to finally pull it off, but not probable as Porter hasn't scored a knockdown since 2017. Bradley, the champ in total control there. Champ definitely in total control. Caught him with the straight left hand. Might have got the feet tangled up. No, that was a solid, solid left hand right there. Wobbled the champion. Two division world. Crawford has excellent lead tools and overhands, whether orthodox or southpaw. His seemingly favorite leading attack is the 2-3 or 2-shuffle-3 three in the open stance, but he definitely throws the backhand in a variety of ways. Whether a lead strike, counter, or behind a jab, Crawford's level of accuracy and timing make tools and overhands great weapons in his arsenal. That Bud Crawford overcame Columbia. That's really the night that he stepped forward toward prominence in the... Crawford with the left hand. Now he throws that uh, between rounds period coming off of round four. Here you see Crawford land a beautiful overhand left at the beginning of the round. That took all the fight out of Diaz for that particular round, I think. He backed up right there, did shorter than most guys and could out jab anybody. Good left hand by Crawford. I would say for people to, oh, good. Right there, he just got his hands up walking forward. You're never going to get to Crawford like that. Anybody else out of here, oh, good straight left hand. Vasily Lomachenko. Thing is all set up by the jab and Crawford. Brenda Seconde. Lufton got to do a corner. Got that hard right jab, that fast left hand, that incredible. He's enjoying a 37 to. Easy Crawford. Counter with a straight left, followed by a beautiful right hook. And because he's so tall and elusive, he slips the right hook coming back at him. Take that with you while I'm gone. Porter has been vulnerable to the one two lead tools and overhands. 
Porter gets caught between the two styles he tries to implement, and it seems like once he's in attack mode, he's in attack mode and gets caught deciding how to come in. Once inside, his center line is often exposed as he's squared to his opponent ready to brawl. Also, Porter looks to bait and counter the jab while he's bouncing and moving laterally, so when his opponent throws a lead to or overhand, it could catch him off guard. Sometimes he could be a bit careless and try to defend with the lead hand down and get caught trying to parry a 1-2 with the backhand alone. No doubt that both these fighters have tremendous bravado and dog in them and are willing to take shots to dish out punishment if it comes down to it. For Porter, it's built in his style and DNA. For Crawford, it's built in his DNA and adverse to his style and technical ability, which may come to play a major role in this fight. The big advantage that will most likely dictate this fight is due to Crawford's ability to switch or start southpaw and counterpunch off the back foot, using his athletic footwork to exit at angles. The last time Porter fought a good counterpuncher off the back foot was Keith Thurman. Thurman isn't a southpaw, but the same concepts will apply. Thurman was catching Porter repeatedly with check hooks, counter twos, and counter uppercuts off the back foot. Final minute of the sixth. Good counter right hand by Keith Thurman. Likes to tutor the he is. left eye as well. Now we don't Looks like a bad. Those are the kind of rounds that separate the men from the ball. On the card of Thurman. So and you know, out. Porter has done oh, all. Oh, oh, Porter walks right into that left hand. A couple of left right. hooks to the head by. Oh, that really, it's Thurman coming forward, not Porter. Unfortunately for Sean Porter, the style is Crawford's bread and butter. Every time Crawford fights an opponent with a quick first step ambush type style, he relies heavily on his bread and butter. Crawford looks his most dominant countering off the back foot, so Porter's style plays right into his strengths. Crawford has quick hand and foot speed with impeccable timing and punch placement. Crawford is even more efficient than Keith Thurman at setting traps off the back foot with a stronger dominant hand check hook and counter uppercut while making it a point to pivot out exiting to an angle to hit and not get hit. Tool here. Hex Cobb had an otherworldly chin, and Larry Holmes was utterly mixed. No matter how much weight he gains or loses, further shorten his career. Oh, good shot by Crawford. Oh, Roy Jones, I can't think of another top fighter who brought everything his way, doing anything he wants to do, landing the upper personality. And you're right, Terrence Crawford does have that mean streak that Roberto Duran possessed. Sugar Ray big shot. May have been the beginning of the end for Diaz. And now Crawford is from Bernard Hopkins. And Roy Jones. And if you want to step close with landing beautiful uppercuts just like that, that really hurt Diaz. I think Diaz, I mean, these body shots, that was a good upper. That was on the undercard of Andre Ward versus Chad Dawson. Those body shots are making it worse. Steady pressure is just a pro the best in the world. One of the things that makes Canelo Triple G such an enormously, it appears that he is being treated for a concussion. We'll once again update the Jonathan Maisiello situation. We have been told. From the outside, he wants to stay right as the fight go on. Fighters. Crawford fighting Southpaw should allow him to best Thurman's performance because of his boxing IQ and elite right or lead hand in the Southpaw stance. Crawford can take away Porter's jab with lead hand play, making Porter's entry points based off his backhand and therefore more predictable. Amir Khan had one of the fastest front steps and some of the quickest hands in the sport and had some success ambushing Crawford like he has against everybody else in the closed stance or orthodox versus orthodox. Crawford switches stances to southpaw and immediately takes away Khan's lead hand, pawing the jab, or what I call jab jousting, for dominant lead hand positioning. Again, making the entry strike more predictable and easier to time with the counter or defend.
When he used it to his advantage, Errol Spence showed us that a lead hand could dictate the fight to Sean Porter. In the open stance against Errol Spence, Porter had some issues with his lead foot being stopped or impeded by Spence's lead foot coming in. Once again, a southpaw advantage against Porter, making it easier for a natural counterpuncher like Crawford to time and sharpshoot with counters or defend, and harder for Porter to step in quickly with effective offense. So how do I see the fight playing out? I think this fight is essentially Crawford's skill set versus the dog in both these fighters. I don't see Porter being able to contain and trap Crawford on the ropes at will like some do. Crawford has some wrestling experience and is really strong when it comes to grappling, clinching, and turning his opponents who are supposedly bigger men. Crawford also has elite footwork when he chooses to utilize it to avoid the onslaughts of Sean Porter. If Crawford starts off or quickly finds his way to that southpaw stance and gets Porter's timing, I think it could be a dominant performance where he has a good chance of hurting Porter with his shot and stopping Sean Porter as he's one of the sport's best finishers. But if he decides to show the dog in him with Sean Porter who is definitely about that life, I think the fight is close and Porter could be in yet another split decision type of fight. Another important piece of information that everybody has to take into serious consideration is the referee. If they get a ref that allows them to work on the inside, then Porter will have a better chance at making it to that split decision. If they get a ref that breaks the clinch fast, I think Porter's chances to pull off what will be considered the upset are slim to none. So to reiterate, I like Bud Crawford for the win. If I was a betting man, I'd seriously consider Crawford by stoppage, depending on the odds, hedge with the over. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel.